David Melpass, this Fed Day, good to have you here within SEMA Hi, Tom. Uh, Global. Um, how disruptive is this kind of testimony? You, you ran for Republican office in New York State, but in your time with Bush Sr., how disruptive is his testimony? Uh, I, I do think that the financial system as a whole depends on customer funds being segregated and about timely uh, bankruptcy proceedings and so on, the cash coming out. And so this worries people. Uh, the mm -hmm. fact that Congress has so had so many days to get itself inserted into this process, it makes you wonder what are the regulators right. doing. Two great charts. Let's bring them up right now. This is from David Rosenberg. And David, I've been looking all, all, all morning. I've been looking forward to talking to you about this. This is the top of the market net worth chart. 17 quarters, which is four years and a quarter. And this is from David Rosenberg setting it up at the peak there. And there's that plunge down. This is the deleveraging of America that this Federal Reserve has to deal with. Uh, yes, but it's also that uh, people's mortgages are, are, are going down faster. Their assets are going down faster than they're recognizing the reduction in the value of their mortgages. Mm -hmm. So I think there is that aspect of this. And also, I want to put in that people's jobs are the biggest asset that they have. Their biggest so this, future net worth. Yeah, the net present value of your job is worth okay. more than your house or your stock portfolio. Great exclusive math moment. FV equals PV, one plus R to the T, which means it's that net present value pulling the future good feeling to the present, isn't it? That's right. And so as people decide whether they're going to buy a car, they're more concerned about whether they have a job and are likely okay. to have a job next year. And here's the same chart from Rosenberg with personal disposable income. So this is my net worth, my balance sheet, divided by the income made. And there's two moving parts there. But the answer is on a cyclical basis, we're really back to where we began. And again, the Fed is challenged by this deleveraging and this job fragility and this income fragility in America, aren't they? Yes, but I really don't like comparing an asset to a flow. So it's like comparing an asset to an income statement account uh, on a corporation. So it, there's not really going to be a relationship between disposable income and people's uh, and people's debt. A lot of the debt is being created as uh, in as part of an asset transaction that's going on. So I'd rather look at people's assets versus their debts. Uh, and right. for the United okay, States, fair. the U.S. has the biggest net worth of any in, of all the rest of the world the challenges we have now are backed up by this 15 trillion dollar machine that's working and other nations don't have that that's right the Americans <clears throat> own the corporations in most countries that's not that's not well, the case let's look at one of them India folks this is a new focus for us you see the challenges in India this is from David Malpass and my book flying on one engine was all over gold in yen here is gold in Indian rupees and you can see the surge up there in recent months to 88,000 rupees per ounce and, and it's really become a constraint and they don't have the diversity and power of their economy we do given shock uh, that's right. I'm really, uh, I think it's harmful to have this trend of pe people having to put money in gold in order to protect themselves from central banks. They're also putting money in bonds, in treasury bonds, to protect themselves from deflation. So you're paying insurance, a huge insurance burden on the economy uh, to protect yourself from the Fed. Uh, and that's disturbing the global growth outlook. It's all gro Look at this chart. I was floored by this. This is a David Malpass chart. This is a current account deficit of India and you can see the erosion and the recent erosion is fund flows change people move money perhaps out of these bricks due to uncertainty they move money out of Europe you're getting the dollar stronger for all the wrong reasons aren't you yeah, yeah. so we're seeing the euro actually weaken so I don't want to see the dollar strong because the rest of the world is crumbling I'd like to see the dollar strong because the Fed has said it wants it to be strong in the future and so I'm worried as the as the <clears throat> capital flows, your current account deficit and your, your, your capital flows that you're describing mm -hmm. overwhelm the trade flows. It really doesn't work to have these float, wildly floating exchange rates because everybody in India is more worried about the value of the rupee than making money right. than actually going to work yeah. every day. David, thank you so much on a busy day for stopping by. David Malpass and Seema Global.